Hello folks and welcome to England where the sun is shining for once and energy prices have gone absolutely through the roof. So today's mission is to get some of these rather large solar panels and stuff them up on top of the shed, install a 1.2 kilowatt grid tie inverter and see if we can reduce our energy costs a little bit. Let's get on with it. The current system on top of the roof of the shed is just a couple of little solar panels, probably all of about 50 watts each. Let's get inside the shed and let's show you what we have set up. So here we are inside the shed and you can see a couple of cables coming in here. These two cables carry the power from the two solar panels on top of, on top of the shed, the little 50 watts. They're paralleled up on one side of the switch. There's a big switch here and that runs round to, and that runs round to this solar charge controller right here it's got a couple of usb ports on the front of it um i've got a big fat hairy forklift battery up here 12 volt forklift battery up here and also a little lithium ion power pack i charge all of my power tool uh batteries from this system um, you know, it's just sort of, it is, it's sort of useful for the shed, but uh, it doesn't save us a lot of money. So let's replace this uh, with a proper grid tight inverter system. First job of the day is to remove those old solar panels that are up there and see if we can oik these massive great big solar panels up on top of the shed. It's going to be hard work. So here on my left hand side, or perhaps your right hand side, are the two old solar panels that I was using on, on top of the shed for the 12 volt solar, solar charge system. And then here on the right hand side of me, you can see this massive, great big 36 volt solar panel. And actually I've got six of those to try and fit on top of the shed. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but uh, we'll see if we can get it done. Um, hopefully that should give us a decent 1,200 watts. Let's, uh, uh, let's get back to work. Seem to be making some progress here, sliding the solar panels up onto the roof. And it looks as though there might just be enough space for six of them up there. We'll have to see how that goes. No, I haven't got a tape measure out and calculated it and all that kind of madness. I'm just whacking them up there and see if they tessellate. I think that's fair, right? This, by the way, is an NIU electric scooter. It's about 125 cc, and yes, indeed, excuse the bag, it's plug-in chargeable. So at the moment, we've got that plugged in and charging. The plan, assuming this all works out correctly, is that we'll be able to get on that bike and go up to 50 miles at up to 50 miles an hour, and it won't cost us a penny. How cool would that be? Free motoring. I'm just laughing at how many solar panels were hanging off the shed roof uh, that I seem to be just sort of pulling, pulling down off the shed roof. <laughs> These things are heavy. So having put some of the solar panels on top of the shed, I've now bodged them into my existing, well I've paralleled two of them up, and I've bodged them into my existing solar charge controller inside the shed, which runs in via the white cable. And uh, everything seems to be working nicely, so that's good. We've still got, uh, We've still got our 12 volt system up and running in the shed. What I need to do now is get the rest of these panels up on the shed, but there's a few challenges. So one of the challenges that I've got uh, during the wind storm that took these solar panels out of service uh, on, on the solar farm, which is ultimately where these solar panels came from, um, got no connector on the end of the cable, which is a bit of a bummer, but uh, that's easily solved. Now, one thing that you are going to want to consider is these cables are normally um, aluminium, so you won't be able to solder to this. 
so you won't be soldering connectors on there. You're going to have to crimp some connectors on there. With a bit of luck, I've got some connectors that might just work. Let's have a go. So with a little gentle persuasion, I've got here some crimp terminals. Size yellow. These are the larger variety of crimp terminals. And as you can see here, they just crimp nicely onto that cable. You need a little persuasion just to get that crimp onto the end of that cable there. But uh, yeah, that works. So happy days. We've got a solution for connecting these up now. So I've doubled up some thick red and black, put a uh, reciprocal spade terminal on it. And uh, that's pretty good. We'll get some self amalgamating tape and make sure that uh, these connections are thoroughly waterproof. And there we have it, self amalgamating tape. It is the ultimate in waterproofing and cable strain relief. So the next thing I've done is make some mounting brackets so I can bolt these onto the side of the shed and uh, I can screw through the side wall of the shed. Well, would you look at that from one day to the next? It changes from beautiful sunshine and then goes to rain. Welcome to England. So on the bench in front of me, let me show you what I've done. So the micro inverter arrived late yesterday afternoon and I haven't had time to wire it in properly. I've done a proper bodge job of this, as you can see by some of the cables and whatnot. Um, but obviously I'm gonna put, a, I'm gonna put this in properly in a, in a short while. I need to extend cables and that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to see if it, if it was working and uh, whether it got warm. And one of the things that I've been told about these microinverters, or cer certainly what I've read in the forums about these microinverters, is that they can overheat and they can stop working and the power transistors fail in them and all that kind of good stuff. And I'm sort of hoping that isn't gonna happen in England to this particular unit because it's the latest version of the unit and also because our climate isn't quite as hot as some of these countries where they have 90 degrees Fahrenheit and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, let's get this thing properly wired into the shed and uh, let's see how it performs. So what I've done is I've installed uh, a little power meter here in the kitchen and uh, this cable here goes off out to the shed and we can see that in a sort of medium sunny day that we're generating about 600 watts um, the best result that we've had is 893 watts at some point that was our peak result, which is pretty good. Um, still not quite the 1200 that I'm hoping for, but we're still in the end of March at the moment. So, um, so if we look out the window, if we look out the window, we can see we've got a little bit of gray sky there, a bit of sun there. And amazingly, it was snowing a few seconds ago. <laughs> hey up folks. I'm getting all eco warrior on you. I've got uh, socks and Crocs on. Anyway, the great news, the solar powered shed of wonderfulness is working. It's generating power. Let's just have a quick look inside the shed. Looking inside the shed then we can see, we can see the Vivor unit. This is a 1,200 watt micro inverter. All of the cables have now been crimped and plugged into into the unit solar panels a couple of the solar panels are in parallel the solar panels that see the most shade i put those in parallel with solar panels that are in the sunshine in order to try and compensate for those solar panels that might be in the shade 
but yeah uh, it's still sort of on the bench in the shed at the moment and i need to do plenty more work to get it installed and sorted uh, and the wind has really picked up so i should probably bolt those solar panels down a little better right it's just starting to rain right it's just starting to rain so i'm going to get back inside the house where it's warm and cozy in front of the fire Woohoo! if we look at the power output at the moment when it's raining we've got about 100 watts coming out of the unit um, and just on a cloudy day we we seem to get about sort of 350 watts or so so that's not bad sort of 250 350 watts so yeah I'm, I'm tempted to say that this system is pretty much working as it should give us a little while and we'll give you an update on uh, how it's performing over a period of time. I'd like to be able to put some basic calculations together, figure out what kind of money this is saving us and how long the payback is on it. We paid about £50 each for the solar panels, which is a very good price because normally if you were going to buy them new, they'd be in the region of £200 a go. And I think it was about £170 for that inverter. I had the wire and the crimps were negligible. Um, and obviously pretty much everything else I just sort of hacked and bodged together myself. So yeah, I reckon this should pay back pretty quickly, especially considering I've got a base load inside the house. Let me show you my base load. Get up the stairs, past the laundry. And yeah, this is the base load. In here we have one, two, three, four 3D printers, all manufacturing. So four 3D printers, all manufacturing away up here. This is the base load. And I'm tempted to say that, you know, that solar panel set should run all of these printers on a sunny day. I could almost claim we're carbon neutral. I don't know if you can see it, but, uh, as we look outside, it's actually snowing. Can you Adam and Eve it? Uh, we're at the end of March, beginning of, beginning of April. But yep, yeah, it's snowing outside. Okay, let's get some maths done. It's a lovely sunny day outside, beautiful blue skies. It's about 10.30 in the morning. Uh, let's just have a quick look and see what kind of results we're getting on the power meter inside the kitchen. 600 watts at 10.30 in the morning. That's going to increase as the day goes on. Those numbers are going to increase as the day goes on. And potentially, that could even get up to a kilowatt. Might even achieve 1.2 kilowatts at peak of the day. Um, so I'm not unhappy with that. Let's do some maths. Let's do some math. Okay, massive calculator out. So I've done some research and my research says that there is on average about 1,400 hours of sun in the year. If we then multiply that by, let's say 700 watts, so that's 700 uh, watt hours, if you like, that's 980 kilowatt hours. So 980 kilowatt hours multiplied by, uh, it costs me, electricity costs me at the moment, 26p. In one year, in the sunshine, that would have made 254 pounds. In the shade, it will still be making 300 something. This, this clearly, this will have paid for itself inside a year. Ha! <laughs> happy, happy days. I think this will have more than paid for itself inside the year. Well, folks, I best go ahead and get this all wired in and put in place properly and tidy things up in the shed and all that kind of stuff. But I just want to say a big thank you to my mate, Matt, a uh, reckless engineering. That's R E C K L E W S engineering on YouTube. And Matt has inspired me to do this. Matt has done a very similar thing. He's built a shed and actually he's got lithium ion power batteries in there. He f fills up those batteries and uses them in the evening and that kind of stuff. It's well worth checking out his video on that. Um, so big thank you, Matt. Uh, to all of you guys that have watched, really appreciate it. Please feel free to pop any comments, thoughts, suggestions, opinions, don't care. Just interested to see what people have got to say about this madness. I know it is dubious. It's all just sort of like thrown together 
it's cobbled together out of you know cheap bits and pieces that I've been able to get my hands on but ultimately you know I didn't want to spend lots and lots of cash some people spend upwards of 25,000 pounds putting solar panels on the roof of their house and all of this kind of stuff and uh, you know the, year, the, the payback on that is just going to take years and years and years whereas I feel with this I feel the payback is going to be pretty good, especially with energy prices continuing to increase as time goes on. Cheers and beers, people. Make sure you give us a big old thumbs up and we'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.